So let's start talking about transpose. Now we've talked a little bit about it and it's real simple. This is the anatomy of it. The center dots are for uh, an operation. They perform an operation. These larger dots simply move the dot around. The center dot is usually the one that performs, this is usually the one that performs the main action. So this is one that you'll use for move. Okay, but then again, with scale, it equals kind of a skew. And with rotate, it equals a twist. And again, these transpose lines tend to act, I mean, I always think of them as these like three-piece nunchucks. You just have to, or some kind of staff. You just have to always remember that one end or the other is always the fulcrum for some sort of behavior. So if we come into scale, we drag that out. If we select here and drag towards our end dot, the entire model moves towards that dot. And he moves there. That Where that dot is, that's where zero is. Whereas if we move the other direction, so it's going to move right towards the center point. Same holds true for rotate. Whichever dot I select, if I select this one, then this becomes the pivot. Or that becomes the pivot. This pivot is going to be really important when you do things like you create a watch and you want to duplicate these lines at specific points. This is how uh, Pixelator will do it, is he'll come in and point one end, drag the other, and then he'll just drag it around. Okay, a couple of things I think are really neat, you may or may not be aware of. This is a rotate camera. That's kind of cool. If you click this, you can move him around. It doesn't actually change his position. You can see I'm checking in the tool palette preview. This is where his real world position is stored, so to speak. So it hasn't changed anything. What it's done is really just rotate the camera. So if I was to come in and press shift and then click, he'll still be at that space. All right, now there's one other, there's really two other things that we need to know about this. So we've got the rotate camera, but then if we switch over to move, we have some behavior that's kind of really uh, important to keep in mind. So with move, this end dot equals skew, this equals move, and this guy here equals clip. So if we skew it, We'll be able to visually skew this guy in some kind of strange way, or we can move him around with the center dot. Or we select this one, and we just cut right into him. Let's turn that poly painting off. Let's go into solo mode. And this is you know, quite similar to what you see with clip brush or with the trim brush, uh, but if you've used the new trim brush in R6, you'll know that this isn't the topology it gives. This is the topology that uh, clip brush uses. And that's important because they have this kind of mistake where they have enable transpose trim. In preference, transpose, they didn't quite get that language right. So, because trim's kind of a new one for them. and turn that off. But it's pretty cool because it flows along the topology so it can be quite impactful. I'm gonna, uh, because undo has this problem, 
where um, it will undo the polypaint. It doesn't basically see undoing polypaint as an action, so when it goes backwards in history, it goes back to when polypaint was there. And great, I have to redo that. <laughs> okay, there we go. Move, drag this guy out, and we can totally trim that. And what I find just amazing, you know, is how solid that is. If you want to melt somebody, this could be quite a fascinating way to do that. Come in here with blob. Move. And I'm sure you could get something interesting out of that. A puddle of the guy. Okay. The other thing I the other thing we just need to make sure we're hundred percent aware of is the axis line. Axis. So along with this transpose line. You've also got these guys, this blue and red. These are the uh, axes that allow you to, say, m adjust the transpose line to be directly along the red. Click that red dot, click the blue dot, the green dot, and you're in good shape. That also helps with if we're going to be doing this a little bit differently. And let's say trim the front. Trim the back. Trim the sides. You can see it can give you some pretty interesting results. It's actually really interesting results. And Steve, yeah, they call it transpose trim, but definitely it's a transpose clip because the topology is still there. That's not to say that it eventually doesn't grow into where it is an actual trim and this topology is gone, but I think that's, uh, that's a little bit more complicated and harder to do in real time. Okay, so these axes, boom, 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 boom. These are really important when you get to hard surface. Right now, not so much, right? Especially on a guy like this. Uh, but hard surface, you'll see uh, guys like Paul Gabriel uh, using that quite a bit. 